So, 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 this is gonna be a preview of what's to come pretty much. So there's been some significant upgrades to the workflow and also the Kimla actually. Let me show you. So if you've watched any of my old videos, you, I'm sure you know of the troubles I've had with the ethanol and the, the clogging of the needle valve and the variant air pressure in the container making it really difficult to dial in the right amount of ethanol at all times. Sometimes I just have to go there and wiggle it and it starts running again for like 40 minutes and then it starts tapering off and whatnot. So before we get to that, the first upgrade is, I don't have the covers off by the way, so ignore that. There is a radio transmitter on the side of the Z axis so that when the air cylinders that are in here, when they pressurize lowering the suction cup, there's a pressure switch in there activating, sending a signal to the extractor, starting it. And then there's a time delay relay in there so that whenever it deactivates, it takes about a minute and a half, two minutes before it deactivates the extractor. This thing. Oh, yes. So, uh, so that's number one. Number two, one of the big things is this regarding the ethanol so I finally installed this specialty pump specifically for like hazardous chemicals kind of like ethanol but mostly the methyl ethyl what's the word? methyl ethyl ketone yeah the meek component the denaturing component in ethanol well my ethanol anyway so I hooked this standby signal from this pump to the output from the Kimba PLC. Works at rate identical to the original solution. And I now got 10 liters instead of two or whatever. So, oh my God, this is, this is a game changer. I'm telling you, this should be standard on Kimba machines using ethanol, definitely. That makes it also so that I can use this for oil like it's meant to. Should I be running steel again sometime? So yeah. I did run a uninterrupted four millimeter diameter hose, two millimeters internally, all the way. So no couplings that could cause a leak or anything. So, oh my God, it's so good. So I've been running a lot more, especially unattended. Well, basically uninterrupted this week, this machine has been just running and running. And I've also, when it's time to go home, I've loaded two sheets, ran the program and just went home. Came back at like nine in the evening, swapped the sheets, started up again and left. The last problem to running unattended for seriously long hours has been the compressor since the bolt bearings in the spindle are pressurized always. As soon as power is on, that's on. So it's been leaking a little bit of air, making the compressor go on and off all night. So temporarily, what I did was this. Yeah, there's a fan too, because the compressor overheats in, in this little room. So I put a smart plug there to this uh, Grandosa distributor, if you will. And you can't really tell, but there's a pneumatic valve there. So I can just use my phone in the app and set a timer for when to turn off this fan, the uh, after cooler, and also the valve for the pressurized air. Of course, that's not a, per not a permanent solution. Oh, look at these parts. Oh, so shiny. Ooh, that's nice. What I'm gonna do actually is this. So there's a light there and if I turn the spindle by hand you can see it goes off. That's just a spindle standing still green light indicator. So what I'm gonna do is hook up a relay to these lights so that whenever this shines the timer starts and let's say 60 minutes after this starts shining 
everything turns off in there. And should it go like that again, off, then everything's gonna, of course, start up. But I'm also going to have a, <coughs> I have a remote somewhere that I'm gonna keep here because let's say I come back and 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 the the, the compressor is off and it's one of it, one thing to do a tool change of course it can't do that because it doesn't have pressure as there so forget whatever i was gonna say okay so that's the machine i can run uninterrupted and i know it's gonna get the exact right amount of ethanol at all times i can find adjust at the pump it's doing a hundred pulses per minute but you can adjust the strong length how much ethanol you want i've been testing this and i'm using way less ethanol than i was using before and i got 10 liters of it so i could probably run a week on that oh, so good so good it cannot be understated overstated yeah overstated so the automation the workflow has also gone forward and if you've seen the the, the old videos the automation of creating a dxf with specific layer names auto generating the g-code program auto generating the bending program all that works but when i get these orders where there's maybe hundreds of components and 25 different kinds of components some of them are going away for surface treatment like cr chromation is that what it's called chromatering in Swedish some is going to get uh, powder coated some needs welding some needs press those uh, clinching uh, nuts and so forth and th that information is stored in the PDFs that accompany the 3D model from the customer. And if it's up to me to go through all of the components and write down or remember or whatever, making sure that all of those components get whatever treatment they require, that's n not a good solution at all. And I don't want to sit there for hours just going through all of that. So. What I did was the automation, uh, by the way, I switched from UiPath to Windows Power Automate. It's basically the same thing. You could go either way, but Power Automate is free with Windows 10. So, uh, so what it does, it, it looks at the part name, the 3D model, and all of the parts have a unique number a unique name so it looks through the pdfs that also have this name in its name and it's looking for like svets which means welding and and the different types of coatings and paints and whatnot press uh, clinching nuts all of that stuff and it stores that information and when it's done well halfway through basically all the automation this printer just spits out one of these that I have prepared so I don't have to blur everything a gazillion times. So up in your right there, that's where I put in the number of how many are ordered and how many I've produced. There's a QR code there, mostly for the customer. This is actually a PDF that's generated. So it's in the same folder as the uh, 3D model. So all of those are actually links. I can click the component.dxf to open the DXF. I can click the mail like hund there uh, on the left to open up the mail client to, to email this specific customer print etiquette just means print label for this specific product i'm not going to be using those because i'm not going to want to be rummaging in in the folder of the component i don't even know want to know where it, that folder is i could just press this uh, folder that's uh, being crossed over there to open that specific folder but anyway so here you can see there's a bunch of dashes and then oh, behandlad means untreated. So those first dashes, that's gonna say svets or welding if this part would require welding. And then there's those other central looking dashes there. Those were gonna, those would say 
what type of surface treatment should this be required to have that. So platt mode, that means just flat uh, me measurements, well, dimensions. Uh, this is a specialty component that I just prepared so that I could show you. So that doesn't have that yet. But that's mostly for the powder coating guys because they wanna give me a price on this piece and they need to know what the uh, measurements are, how, how big it is basically. And then there's the barcode. And you already know that I can scan this barcode to load the bending program for this specific component. But I talked to Kimla and I was like, please, I would really love a barcode scanning function in PCK, what do you know? Turns out they're already, it already already exists. So if I just go there, like importing a file, there's an icon there, barcode. It automatically just opens for me because I selected that it would. All I need to do, there's my barcode scanner. Bleep. And it finds it, I can just choose to deselect uh, all the layers that I don't want. I typically remove bending line layers, text layer and whatnot. I just press OK there and it ports, and it ports the file for this component. Oh my God, you realize how nice that is. So my brain only needs to be active while preparing the order for the components that the customers order. I didn't make I need to make sure everything's right, it's not corrupt, it's good, it's in a it's in its proper folder under the specific customer and, and project. And then I run the automation and then I don't even think need to think about it. I don't need to remember the surface treatment of paint or what color it's gonna have, where the file is, what the project was, who ordered it, none of that. So I scan it there, I cut it out with my auto-generated G code. I scan it there, I bend it with my pre-made bending program. And right here, there's gonna be a packing table. Those uh, work table sheets are there. And that's where we're gonna have a, another scanner. So I'm gonna scan this there. It's gonna print out the label for this product when I've packed it. I just apply it, put it on a shelf, customer picks it up. Oh, oh. Yeah, I'm gonna finish up a bunch of tiny small things and then we're gonna go through and have a deep dive into that stuff it's it's so sexy I can't emphasize enough just how great that is okay so it's been what 12 13 minutes and I'm still just rambling on hopefully this was interesting in anyway uh, okay so I'm gonna run 16 of these sheets this weekend and it's Saturday today and I'm gonna start off, I'm gonna clear, clear that table, load up another one of these eight millimeter sheets. I'm gonna run the, those two and I'll come back in, in a few hours, switch those out and run again. And I'm gonna try to keep that going for the whole weekend because uh, we got a lot of parts to make. So uh, yeah, next time, happy weekend.